Wow, I just got back from my first time seeing The Hobbit. An unexpected journey. I am very, very, very impressed. I, I just wanted to give my uh, initial reaction, and this is it. I am blown. <laughs> I am blown away. I sat there watching this movie with a, with a pretty big smile on my face most of the time. The humor is great. It's original. It's oh my gosh. It you, you just <laughs> it's a lighter movie. It's much lighter than the Lord of the Rings. Um, it is very long. It's it's two hours and forty nine minutes, but you don't really feel that it's two hours because there's not there's not a boring moment from start to finish. And unlike King Kong, which I really have I'm not I'm not a big fan of King King Kong. Um, there was never a part in this movie that felt like it was excessively overdone. It was perfect. It was perfect. It was classic. It was like, you know, and, and Lord of the Rings, the movie, was, was a good movie. They were good movies. I'm a big fan of the Lord of the Rings movies. Uh, but there's something different about The Hobbit. And all I can say, best, the, best, the best way I can put, put it is... Tolkien was a was an amazingly talented writer and he he made a very rich rich world when he made Middle Earth and you kind of get that from Lord of the Rings but in the Hobbit not only do you get the depth and the and the complexity and the beauty of Tolkien's world but you get his writing too the Hobbit is more like if they took the book and made it into a movie and they kept Tolkien's style. They did they somehow managed to preserve his style from the written page to film. That's what they did with The Hobbit. I hope they can do it for the other two movies. I can't say enough about this movie. It is beautiful. It is gorgeous. The, the characters are wonderful. Um, you, you'll laugh all the way through. I mean, there's definitely parts that are exciting and scary and just, and just so cool. But you will laugh all the way through. There's hysterical parts in this movie that you don't expect. And I think that's the thing about, um, you know, Tolkien had a really keen keen wit in his writing and 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 the hobbit it's it's like i said if, if tolkien himself were alive and he were to make the hobbit i think this is i think he would have totally totally approved of this i think this would have been you know if he didn't have a way to write the the book and the the, the only way he had to create a story was to put it into film I can't say enough about this movie. Um, they they put they tie it together with the Lord of the Rings uh, trilogy flawlessly. I was a little bit worried because they bring Elijah Wood back to play Frodo, and you know the actor's older now, and and how how is he supposed to play Frodo back in back well sixty years in the future when when Bilbo is old. How is Frodo, how, how can we see Frodo as a young Frodo like he was in Lord of the Rings? They pull it off. I was very, very picky about looking at the actors who play the characters that were in Lord of the Rings. They pull it off. Um, I don't know what they did to Elijah Wood, but I don't know if I'm saying his name right. But anyway, he, he doesn't look older. He looks like he did from, from the last movies. And... It is great. There's little, little. It's like the the timelines overlap a little bit at the start of the movie, and and it's just. I don't want to say too much because I do not want to spoil. But you, it's any any Rings fan is going to any Rings fan any Tolkien fan is going to just love this movie. 
And oh my god, I knew I knew from the first three and from going there myself. See? See my shirt? See my shirt? I got this. I, uh, in 2003, I went to uh, New Zealand. And I got to, um, in 2003, I think it was 2003, I got to, um, I visit, visited the North Island. And I got to go to Wellington. And I got to, I, I don't know, um, I'm trying to remember where it was. Um, the, the river that they show in Lord of the Rings where um, Boromir and Aragorn are taking the hobbits down the river. Um, I got to go whitewater rafting on that river. And I got to visit the Alexander Farm and um, I'm trying to remember what it, what the name of that town is called. Um, m m it's Mata Mata, I believe is is what it's called. I might be pronouncing that wrong too, but it's kind of like right in the middle of the North Island. And oh my God, those trees! I I got when I was there. I got to sit inside um, the hole. When I was there, they had destroyed uh, half the holes because um, the movies were over. And then they decided to, um, I guess the, the farmer realized that he could make some money off of those holes as a tourist attraction. And so when I was there, I um, got to go on the Hobbiton tours. And we took a little van out. We got to walk. Um, we got to go by the little lake. And we got to stand underneath a party tree, and there were still ribbons from the from the party up stuck in the tree. And funny thing that you don't really get from the movies, um, those trees are those are pine trees. They look like deciduous trees in their shape, but they're actually pine trees. And I I snuck home two pine cones from the party tree. I still have. I'm very very proud of that fact. I, I have pine cones from the party tree. Anyway, so I got to see Hobbiton, or uh, yeah, ho the Shire Hobbiton, um, between the movies. In fact, they had the the faces, the original faces on the holes when I was there. They were just in the process of taking the original faces down because those were not meant to be up for long duration. They were only there for the movie and they were not waterproof. They were not wet weatherproof. And so while I was there, there were a couple holes that had the faces down flat on the ground and they were replacing the faces with uh, weatherproof faces because um, they decided that they were going to keep those holes um, and they were going to keep what was left of Hobbiton as the, a tourist attraction. You know, a, a way to get money for, um, you know, Alexander Farm. And now, of course, it's going to look a lot different because they've since then gone in, they've restored, they've, I'm sure they've put back the holes that they had covered up before. And they've, it looks like they've I mean, you see a lot more of Hobbiton in this movie than you do in, in The Lord of the Rings. You see a lot more of, of the, um, the land around the, the Bilbo's house. But it's just beautiful. It's beautiful countryside, and you get to see the most gorgeous countryside. It's like, oh my god. You know, I, I knew, I didn't get to see the South Island, but I knew from being in New Zealand for three weeks and from the movies and also watching um, last The Last of the Samurai, what a gorgeous country New Zealand is. But this movie, it it's like you're drooling. It's so gorgeous. And the sets, they show, they show Riverton in the movie and there are sets that are so gorgeous. It's like, ah! <laughs> beautifully done. Everything about this movie is amazing and it's funny and it's like I said you're gonna love you're gonna fall in love with the characters and there's just it's it's oh my god in the end. I'm not gonna say too much but let's just say that we don't really get to see a whole lot of smog. I'm sure they're saving that for you know later on but at the end you get to see Oh, see, and I don't want to say that either because I don't want to give it away. Let's just say that the little bits that they show of smog, gorgeous. Oh my God, gorgeous. I just like if they can make the rest of his, if they can make the rest of him as cool looking as the little parts that they show. Oh my God. So anyway, oh, go see it. I'm gonna probably see it again tomorrow. I just, I was a Rings fan. I, I love the Rings, but. Hobbiton is, or Hobbiton, The Hobbit 
is Tolkien on film. And Peter Jackson did phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal job with this movie. So, highly recommend, not even remotely disappointed. Oh, and, and the 3D, I saw it as a 3D. I, you know, I think it's one of those movies that can be great with or without 3D. I thought the 3D was really good, you know, but I don't, unlike with Avatar, which I, I really felt like Avatar, when you watch it when it's not 3D, it kind of loses something. You know, Avatar was really made to be a 3D movie. I think that this movie would be equally impressive uh, two-dimensional as three-dimensional. Three-dimensional, definitely, you're, you're more in the action. It puts you in Middle Earth more, but I don't think that, you know, I saw all three of the Rings movies in 2D, in two, two-dimensional, and they were wonderful. So I honestly don't think that this this movie um, would, I think it would be just as impressive traditional screen, not 3D. So anyway, good job, Peter Jackson. You, <laughs> you are made, you've made me very, very happy. This is probably, um, one of the best fantasy movies I have seen in my life. And that's saying a lot because I have seen a lot of really good fantasy movies. So thank you so much, Peter Jackson. You are brilliant. And, um, you know, I, I am old enough that I remember when there weren't any Rings movies and the only thing we had were those dopey cartoons, which were actually pretty cool, you know, a uh, different, a uh, unique way of doing uh, animation. But, you know, thanks to you, Middle Earth Lives. And I just so impressed and recommend the movie so, so much. So thanks for listening if anybody has. Bye.